Hello, everybody. So I've decided to jump into this particular video game. Um, it's a demo. It's currently incomplete. <clears throat> and uh, it's in the process of being developed by uh, one Julia Minamata. I became aware of her and her uh, project of creating this video game through following various different developers um, that are part of uh, the adventure game uh, scene, which is uh, a genre that I really like and I uh, enjoy playing tremendously. This particular video game uh, does things a little bit differently by um, going via the style of old school adventure game graphics which uh, for me seems to be like a challenge and also an art form in and of itself I love old school games um, in terms of adventure games that I played in, in this kind of a, a, a style King Quest series, you have the Police Quest series, this is a Leisure Suit Larry, basically the things that Sierra um, was producing at the time. Um, and essentially the interface is uh, not point and clicky, it's more or less you, you walk around. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the interface in this video game as of yet, in terms of how it, it blends or stays traditional to that, I'm starting this fresh. And the reason I decided to start this fresh was because I saw uh, Julia posting a video saying that it's useful for her to see people play through her demo. Um, normally, I'd wait for the entire completed product to come out. I don't like being <laughs> sort of put in this situation where I have like a cliffhanger presented to me or... Uh, you know, the things that I, I, I might necessarily want to see to completion. Um, I'm like this with, like, any form of entertainment, like television, that sort of thing. I usually wait until the entire series is, is, is available so I can binge at my own pace. Um, and I've gotten burned <laughs> in the past with some adventure games because I, I didn't decide to take that approach. And it's a little disheartening, but, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. So I figured... Might as well um, give uh, Julia resources so she can finish it. what I can see from just screenshots alone and just her presence uh, flying around to all these conventions and sort of getting people interested in her product. Um, and I lost my train of thought. Yeah, it, it's looking really good. Uh, it's looking really promising, and it looks like something I'm, I'm definitely going to be interested in. Uh, and from the title screen alone, I mean, I'm already pretty much into it. So we have an intro. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what that's about. Crimson Ontario. That was a little fast. So I wasn't able to read what's on the bottom of the screen there. Man, this takes me back. Okay. There you are, Nancy. Press enter to advance text. That's a good feature. I like that. Um, I'm not sure if like anything like that was ever implemented in the Syria the Sierra games. Like a lot of the times, you would have to sort of read it out. I haven't played. A text-based adventure game in the longest time. I, uh, God, it was probably like back in the 90s? When I was sort of like playing on, I think it was a 386 at the time. In any event. So we have the portrait of the individual who's, uh, who seems to be speaking here. It's like an older gentleman. Uh, he's got a rockin' bow tie. Uh, and already, like, I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, in terms of just the, the general layout. 
Uh, press enter to advance. This is it. What we've been waiting for. Oh, been waiting for... What? Oh, there he goes. Diamonds! Far up north, a fisherman found a massive diamond in the belly of a fish. Okay. This could be a real boon for our mineralogy exhibit. We need something better than those... Uh, dilettantes? Dilettantes. Not a word that I've used, and it's not one that I'm familiar with. So, what happens when you're not familiar with a word? You look it up, which I probably will do later, considering I have to alt-tab and open a browser and that sort of thing. Uh, dilettantes over in geology. Not to say that using these words is, uh, bad. It sort of, uh, gives weight to the character. He seems to be a highly educated person. I mean, he's got glasses and everything, so... I think it fits. So, if my dumbass, uh, doesn't necessarily know what dilettantes over in ge geology, I think it's, it's a pejorative, meaning that it's sort of a put-down. But that's just sort of inferring from maybe my past experience running into the word, and I just sort of forgot the definition. In any event, let's just keep going. I want our exhibit to be the talk of the town. They seem to be in competition in terms of some form of exhibition. As always, as you always say, Professor. So this is the main protagonist. She looks very, very sweet. Of red hair. And she's got a nice little, uh... Scarf. Which is tied in, in an arrangement that, uh... I, I probably wouldn't be able to replicate even if I tried. It looks very proper. She's got little freckles. I like that. I know you're just a clerk with formal training. But we can't spare anyone else to head up there. Okay, so she's a, a bit of, uh... uh Neophyte, maybe just, uh, you know, somebody who's, who's just starting in the business of uh, geology, I guess. She's a geologist, maybe. I'm usually in the habit of sending, I'm usually, I'm not usually in the habit of sending unsupervised young ladies into less civilized regions. That's right, uh, if this was like of older time. <clears throat> Women were uh, not necessarily treated as equals. So having a female protagonist, the fact that, that we have a female protagonist is going to be the lead in this video game, and it's set in uh, a time period where she might encounter some uh, conflicts. Just for that fact alone is, is already interesting to me. And I usually, like, gravitate towards video games where they have female protagonists just because it's sort of an experience that I, I'm not necessarily familiar with. It's an intersection that I have absolutely uh, no insight into other than from um, uh, having, uh, you know, the women as friends and, and, and family and, and that sort of thing. So it gives a unique perspective into uh, a situation where otherwise you can sort of uh, relate considering I'm, I'm a man to a protagonist that is of your own gender so it it gives that sort of like piece of the story that uh, I, I like seeing just because it's it's something that uh, I'm not necessarily familiar with other than you know experience from other other individuals but as luck would have it, the discovery was made near a lodge, where I'm sure you could stay while you conduct your field work. Okay. So, get on home, pack your bags, and catch the train up north. Looks like I'm going on a trip. I'll do my best. Off she goes. Oh, she got a nice little hat. You find something that can make a big splash at the museum, who knows? 
Maybe the university will finally accept you as a mineralogy student. Ah, okay. So... She is a student of mineralogy. But the university seems to be having, um... Uh, putting up roadblocks for her in order to become a student. So if she makes, like, a big discovery, then maybe they're gonna have to start taking her seriously. So she can get a formal education and, you know, become a, a professor in the field. Good luck, kiddo. I won't let you down. Whee! <laughs> there she goes. A few hours later. Here's my train! <clears throat> Getting on board. Good. Bye, big city. Hello, adventures. I don't know why I'm... Like, it, I guess this is supposed to be based in Canada. I'm giving her, like, a southern bell. A few hours later. She looks funny when she sleeps. Yeah. Okay, so she's sleeping. Yeah, maybe the reason I'm giving her a southern, um, a southern accent has to do with another adventure game that I watch a Let's Play on. It was, uh, the, Colonel, uh, the Colonel's Bequest, I think? Um, and I, God, who was the developer for that video? Was it Jane? Was it Jane Jensen, the guy, the, 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 um, developer who did uh, the Gabriel Knight series? I don't know who it was. Anyways, th there's an adventure game that's out there, and I watch a Let's Play on, and it was sort of like a, a Southern doll. She kind of reminds me of, of her, which is probably why I'm, I'm just going into a Southern accent. Maybe I should go with a French-Canadian accent. Maybe she's, she's, she's a girl from Montreal. I'm, I'm curious about this, this person now. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Not at all. Please have a seat. Is that, is that Julia? My name is Kimi Kishira. Where are you headed? Now, she looks a little older here. Just at first glance, it <laughs> reminded me of the developer of the video game. Pleased to meet you. I'm Nancy Maple. Nancy Maple. I like that name. I'm bound for a town called Crimson. I wonder how unheard of it would be to bump into, um... A woman with, I, I presume, uh, Japanese descendants in Canada at about the time this is sort of taking place. Now I'm curious about uh, her new friend that she's talking to. Oh my. Why am I going to the southern? I need to stop doing that. You got some hours yet. I should know because that's where I'm going. I'm a clerk from the Royal Canadian Museum. Interesting. My boss sent me to check out the diamond claim up there. I hadn't heard of that discovery. How interesting. He wants to give our min mineralogy exhibit a boost. The geology exhibit draws more visitors. Okay. I'm not a trained mineralogist, but ever since I was a kid, I love learning about rocks. I'd spend hours in the library reading all about them. Okay, so she is self-educated, and she's probably like, in terms, of, you could do a lot with like self-education. You can learn at a fairly high level just reading books and stuff like that. Especially now since the, the internet, I'd say that pretty much any sort of a field you can get sort of like the equivalent of a bachelor's at least. So, she's speaking eloquently, she's motivated, that's where I'd probably put her in terms of experience. And now she's going out into the field, which is going to give her even more experience. 
So when I found out the Royal Canadian Museum was being established and they had a mi mineralogy department, I jumped at the chance to work there. I'm only a clerk right now, but my dream is to get formally educated in mineralogy. This is my big opportunity to show everyone I can do field work. Where, where will you be staying uh, when we get to Crimson? A place called Crimson Lodge. Ah, I'm staying at Crimson Lodge. Cool. Alright, so she's made a new friend. She's gonna be hanging out with said friend. I'm a birder. Birder? Uh, I've never heard that term before. I'm not familiar with that. Interesting. Another thing to look up. I hear there are nesting colonies of uh, cormorants. That is not a species I'm familiar with either, up there. That's what I want to see. Then again, I'm not a, uh, a bird expert. What's the word for that? Is it ornithology? Maybe I think it's just something else. I think it starts with no. Anyways. I wouldn't mind seeing the Sulox while I'm in the area. I'd love to see the big ships up close. Wonderful. We can be traveling companions. Ah, I'd very much like that. You and Kimmy chat amiably for a while. <coughs> As the day wears on, the rhythm of the train moving over the tracks and the monotony of the scenery lulls you into a deep sleep. Yeah, trains are good for that. I've been on a train once, and it's... It's a very soothing experience. I, I really like traveling by train. I've never been on a plane yet, but I don't know. Trains just seem like it's... I usually like taking my time getting to places and... Trains are a little cheaper. And you get to sort of enjoy the countryside, see the... the, the, the geography of like where you're going. Anyways, that's an aside. And you're gonna be getting a lot of that. <laughs> Because uh, I am a little scatterbrained at times, and um, sometimes I, I go off the rails. Pun intended. The conductor announces, Crimson, this stop. Oh no, where's my luggage? Oh, somebody took our bags. It's not here. I can't find it anywhere. My field kit's in there. What am I gonna do? The train will be leaving soon, Nancy. We have to leave now. Oh, I had no idea anyone else was still on the train. Hello there. Hello. I didn't notice you in the train. Isn't that funny? Not really. I was in the first class car. I'm here to see the nesting cormorants. Is that why you're here? Cormorant? Is that a type of rodent? Uh, excuse me, folks. But I was sent to pick up just one person from the station tonight. A European fellow, expert mineralogist on assignment, hired by the federal government on loan from Antwerp. I wasn't told he'd be bringing any secretaries, wives, go. <laughs> <God. laughs> ah, the good old days. I just like all this shit you had to put up with. Um. Ah. I'm sorry for the confusion, sir. Jack. I'm sorry for the confusion, Jack. But we don't know this man at all. My name's Mansu Maple, and my friend here is Kimi Kishiro. I sent from the Royal Canadian Museum to investigate the diamond claim up by Crimson Lodge. And I'm here to see the nesting cormorants. We're both here to stay at the lodge and go about our business. Do you know which way it is from here? I surely know where it is, because that's where I drove out from. 
But, I'm sorry to tell you, ladies, the lodge has been closed to the public for months. Didn't you hear? My boss, Mr. Richards, he's getting on. He's done with the lodging business. All he wants is peace and quiet. But then this whole diamond fiasco starts up. Folks all up in arms. He's not pleased at all, I can tell you. This gentleman is here on the government's orders. Mr. Richards can't do much about that. But you two. Well, that's unfortunate. But you only have yourselves to blame for being for being uninformed. Let's be off, Jack. Good evening, ladies. The thing is, the thing is, ain't no one coming by here at this time of night. And the nearest accommodation is the lodge, which is a few hours away by automobile. Even still. Look here. I'll drive you ladies up to the lodge for the night. Tomorrow morning I'll bring you back here so you can catch a train. As it is, Mr. Richards is going to be peeved about hosting unexpected guests. I mean, even more than he is already. His sister's come up from the city to stake her claim. And she brought a lawyer to boot. Come along now. <laughs> Uh, sure, I'll get those for you. So your trunks arrived a few... Your trunks arrived a few days ago. Boy, they sure are heavy. Nice antique uh, vehicle there. Ah. Yes, of course. My, sure gets dark here at night. Now, uh, this would probably be a time where, like, a lot of paths were not necessarily lit by street lamps, that sort of thing. So, yeah. One bonus is that you probably don't have light pollution. You could look up in the in the sky and see a lot of the stars, which is not the case here in my home. Um, and probably a lot of other cities that people sort of live in. Lucky for you, I've made this trip many a times. Used to be folks would come out here in the summers for recreation. And before my time, settlers came to this area in hopes of building lines for themselves. But once the mines were used up, there wasn't much reason for them to stay. The soil ain't that good. Have you seen any comrades? I'm hoping to see some. Yeah, they nest up on the cliffside. Stay away, though. They don't like being disturbed, particularly during nesting season, which happens to be right now. I think if she's in the business of, you know, watching birds, she probably knows how to approach them, and she probably knows how to observe them without disturbing them. Um, but yeah, you, you go on, Mr. Driver. So if you're so if you're so wild about birds, I'd let I'd let them alone. I think that should be I'd leave them alone. Maybe I'd let them alone is is uh, a turn of phrase that I'm not familiar with. You do more harm than good. Besides, tomorrow morning I'll be taking you right back to the train station. You won't have any time to go looking for them. Have any other diamonds been found around the lodge? First of all, no way to know if that rock even came from around here. True. I've lived in this area for years and ain't never seen any diamonds, so I know for a fact that it didn't come from these parts. They say that a man coming out of the belly of a fish, that diamond could come from anywhere upstream. You folks are wasting your time, sorry to say. Who cares about shiny rocks anyways? No use to anybody. So, real kind of like practical type of a guy. Which, I'm assuming is is uh, generally how, how people in these smaller towns. Because um, I'm assuming like during this time a lot of towns were pretty small. So if you're heading up north, like... I wonder what the population of these, like, places would be. Ten? 
12. We shall see about that. Your travel wary companions resist. Uh, your travel wary companions resist your attempts at chit chat. It seems that Kimi and Albert have fallen asleep. Although in the almost complete darkness, it's hard to tell. It's impossible for Jack to hear you from the back seat above the cacophony of the engine. Yeah, I'm assuming that like a lot of these engines, these old school engines, had you know some some quite loud noises, considering they were uh, not necessarily very efficient. And the autom automobile rattling over the rough country road, yeah. So like, they didn't have the the kind of paved roads that we necessarily had. So you'd probably be bumping up and down quite a bit. You decide it would be best not to distract him, anyways. Ooh, here we are. Wow, it's spectacular. It does look really cool. Like I like the symmetry. I like the um the use of the lighting. Like it's uh sort of like you have the the pixels that represent the light and in order to, to indicate some sort of tra transparency you can kinda see like the background a little bit. It's a neat trick. You know what? I almost don't mind having more bodies in the lodge. Feels not so empty. Feels like old times. Make yourself at home while you're here. Thanks, Jack. Welcome to Crimson Lodge. Looks even better close up. Warmth of the light, like just hitting the um, the wood paneling, and then it kind of fades away into the darkness. It's looking good. Oh, nice little little door sound effect. Miss Kashiro, Miss Maple, your bedroom is upstairs at the end of the hall on the right. The bedroom across the hall from you, that's Mr. Richard's suite. Try to keep quiet and stay out of his way, won't you? He shares the suite with Margot. She's his lady friend. After I get this luggage upstairs, I'm going to start up some supper. Wouldn't do to have you all starve, eh? Why don't you explore the lodge a little? Talk to the other folks. Most important, stay out of my air. I'm a busy man. Stay out, out of your hair. I'm just gonna bite my tongue considering he's being extremely nice by letting us stay at the lodge when he had absolutely no inclination to do so. He could have just left us at the train station. So we will stay out of his way. Not literally, of course. <laughs> uh, oh. So he's, he, he's a bit of a joker. Oh, uh, and if you want a shower tonight, use the upstairs bathroom near the stairs. It's very pink. You can't miss it. <clears throat> hmm. Wonder if Nat's still here. How many places do I gotta set at the table tonight? I'm going to my room. You and Kimi head upstairs to your bedroom. You don't have any luggage to unpack, but you hang your hat and coat on the footboard of your bed and consider yourself settled in. Chapter 1 Introductions. To move Nancy, you can click the feet icon on your target destination. Of course, or you can use the arrow keys to move. Hmm. I should talk, and it's in capitals, to everyone and get to know them a little before doing. 
So in this kind of a situation, um, what you want to sort of do in a text is keep an eye on, on sort of hints like that that sort of give you the uh, commands that you might want to necessarily be using during this, uh, this game. Your notebook will tell you what you need to do to progress through the game. Cool. Talk to everyone in the lodge. Kimmy, Margot, Albert, Nessa, Corvus, Nathan, Evan, and Jack. Type notebook or N when you need to refer to it. I've got some time to kill. I might as well take a look around too. Typing look into the text. Okay, so this is really cool. Um, I like what, uh, what Julia did here. She's sort of telling people how to play a text-based game. Because back in the day, it was sort of kind of expected. We, we had computers and we generally had to, to sort of type everything, like especially in MS-DOS in terms of like putting command lines, that sort of thing. Um, these days, like everything's point and click. It's all graphic user interface. So, piping these kinds of commands might be a little counterintuitive to new generation, so this tutorial helps. Uh, text parser into the text parser is a good way to get your bearings. A text parser is essentially the box that comes up whenever you, you decide to type. So, usually it comes up with enter. Um, that might be a, another thing uh, in terms of the tutorial. Just sort of indicating what a text parser is, which is this, and uh, hitting enter. Oh, you don't necessarily need to, you can just... This bedroom you're sharing with Kimmy. A pair of twin beds and matching nights and ends. And here's where you, you get sort of like an idea by typing in look, what you can interact with. So you might be able to look at the, the twin beds, the nightstands. Um... Kimmy has claimed the bed closest to the fireplace. A clever move on her part as summer nights are still chilly this far north. Kimmy is here. So, here we are. I'm sort of moving. Uh, do we have an option to save? Save? Yes, we do. So we can put in game one. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And I'm not sure if I should be breaking up the game into segments. So I could probably use a break. So yeah, we'll probably do that. I'll sort of do like part one, part two, part three, that sort of thing as I go along. Her walking animation is very dainty. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, let's see. Look bed. Two twin beds and matching quilted covers. Your coat is hanging on the footboard of one of the beds. Your hat is hanging on the footboard of the one of the coat. Your thick gray wool coat hangs on the brass footboard. Take coat. Ah. Open coat? It doesn't seem to work. Wear coat. You don't need to wear your coat. Okay. Look hat. Trusty green hat hangs on the brass footboard of your bed. Take hat. Uh, look night stand. Small lamp on the night side. Turn on the lamp. You don't require the lamp's light. They're mostly for decorative purposes. See, little things like this is, is sort of the nuance that you kind of miss in point-and-click adventure games. Because as a developer, I'm assuming you have to kind of guess what people might necessarily decide to interact with. Um... Do do do. Look, night stand. The pair of binoculars on this nighttime, next to the small lamp. 
I want to take her binoculars. I don't think that would be a good move. Uh, look, bed. Okay. That looks like a suitcase. I wonder if I can look at the case. Look, suitcase. Kimmy's battered suitcase is made from hard wearing full grain leather. Uh, look, sofa. A comfy window seat. Looks like it would be a nice place to do some reading. Uh, look, whoops. Fireplace. Fireplace. The Fieldstone fireplace looks like it would come in handy on chilly nights. There are some pottery soot accumulating in the fireplace. Take soot? Ooh, I've got some soot. And usually when you have a chime like that... Uh... Ah! There we go. They have an inventory. What is this? You don't want to soil your lucky loop by using it and examining soot. Okay. It's a fine black powder. Your trusty gray wool coat. coat. An issue of Toronto Eye from a few weeks ago. Your lucky mineral, mil, mineralogist loop uh, engraved with your name and attached to a handy lanyard. for getting a close look at these oh my god i actually had one of these when i was a kid yeah okay so you have um this uh sort of part which kind of tucks into this i'm assuming unless like it's completely and totally separate and completely and totally different but mine it was sort of like the shape of an like this eye basically right and if you um, pushed the loop out, it would sort of like swing out and you'd have kind of like this kind of design uh, to it, which is kind of cool. Your green hat. Anything I can inspect? <laughs> That's awesome. You admire the minute dots that comprise the newspaper photograph of a round cut diamond. The nat... nat uh, blah, blah. The natural diamond described in the article would be an octahedron, uh, not a faceted specimen. Right. What an embarrassing inaccuracy. Ah, so mineralogist is, is criticizing the accuracy of the paper. Your will code is a bit threadbare, but it was your mum's. And it's your safety blanket. Aw. Take a look at the hat. Your hat looks pretty good considering you've got it second hand. Your green hat. Oops. Okay, cool. Um What is this? Look maybe display? Look furniture, maybe? Hmm. Look uh what would you call this? Is this how you write cupboard? Yeah. Cabinet. Okay. The fancy glass pan. And that's another thing you have to sort of predict is like what words, what are the synonyms that, that might necessarily uh, apply to this particular thing? The fancy glass pan, uh, glass pan curio cabinet is full of silver steins, bowls, and various other items. Open. Cabinet. Your cabinet is locked. Damn it. Foiled. I notice there's some like pictures in here too. Let's go take a look at those. Yeah, uh, look. Picture. A triptych of a small uh a triptych of small woodcuts on colored paper hang in silver frames. A black and white photograph of a mountain hangs over the fireplace. Look. Mountain. Uh, look. I guess that that sort of like covers that. Uh, look. Poker, maybe? Poker is made of wrought iron. It looks pretty sharp. Can I take the poker? 
poker my poke through your pocket and puncture your leg. Uh. Okay. Let's talk to Kimmy. Talk. Kimmy. I've never been to a place like this before. I'm excited to explore. And I love meeting new people. Yes, you are the inquisitive type, aren't you? I most certainly am. Would you like to join me? No thanks, Nancy. I'm exhausted. That bumpy ride from the train station has left me a, a bit frazzled. I'm going to bed soon after dinner. I'm sorry you won't be able to stay at the lodge and see those nesting cormor uh, nesting cormorants. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. I like to live life day by day. Yeah, I'm the same way. Your notebook will track main objective progress. Oh, cool. You can also ask characters about different topics. You must... Uh, you must specific... Uh, you must specific who you are asking about. I'm guessing it's you must be specific as to who you're ta asking about. Then what you'd like to ask. Ask Kimmy about birds. Cool. Ask Kimmy about birds. I heard there were nesting cormorants in the region. Nowadays they're rare. Fishermen kill them because they think the birds will eat up all the fish. But it's not true. Poor things. Ask Kimmy about binoculars. Binoculars are central to Burma. I, I have a wonderful pair. Ask Kimmy about borrowing binoculars. Sorry, Nancy, I don't know anything about that. Ask Kimmy about bed. The room is very homey. I'm sure many guests have enjoyed it over the years. Too bad Mr. Richards want us to leave tomorrow. Ask Kimmy about family. Hmm. Ask Kimmy about origins? It's a little wordy. About Lodge? Isn't it splendid? I was hoping to stay here for a while to see the Cormorants and other northern Ontario birds. But the lodge is now closed to get close to guests. What a disappointing turn of events. Alright. <laughs> I love her. I love watching her walk. Okay. I'm gonna save here. And that's gonna be part one. And then, um, come back to do art numero dos. Oh, I can hit escape. Restart. Audio volume. Speed. Let's slow things down just a little bit. Press and hold arrow keys to move. Tap arrow keys to move. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh... I'm reminded, like, one of my favorite games is King's Quest 3, and they had <laughs> this cliff that you'd have to walk down using only the area keys, so it would make things a little bit difficult to, uh, to navigate, because if you had it like this, what would happen is that when you tap, the character starts to walk, and you have to tap again in order to get them to stop. So you'd, you'd be hitting like this, and all of a sudden you fall off the cliff. So you'd have to like double double tap and kind of like walk a little bit like this. Oh, I can get her leg to move. I can make her do a little jig. Hey, Kimmy, look at me dance. I'm so awesome. Maybe I'll leave this on. <laughs> it's kind of amusing. Anyways. Part two, coming up.